Hello. So, Britain is being threatened with another lockdown. I'll just read you this little bit of news here. Coronavirus. New COVID restrictions could last six months. Shop staff will have to wear face masks and weddings will be limited to a maximum of 15 people under the rules. Um, <clears throat> fines for breaking laws on gatherings and not wearing a mask will increase from £200 for a first offence. Oh, will increase to £200 for a first offence. <clears throat> he also warned significantly greater restrictions could come if necessary. Mr Johnson said similar steps will be taken across the UK after he met with the leaders of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland on Tuesday morning. You see, in principle, you can do that. The problem is that they are not going to enforce this across the board, are they? They are, uh, when, when uh, you get um, big weddings of religious Jews, you know, the ultra-religious Jews in Stamford Hill or, or the Muslims in Birmingham, and they're going to break the law and the police are just going to, you know, turn a blind eye, aren't they? Uh, retail staff and customers in indoor hospitality venues will also have to wear masks from Thursday. Well, that's reasonable enough. Um, from Monday, 28th of September, only 15 people will be able to attend weddings and civil partnerships in groups of six. Uh, what? 15 people in groups of six. I'm, I'm not getting this. Funerals can still take place with up to 30 people. And of course, if there's COVID around, a lot more than 30 in the funeral. Uh, you will only play indoor adult sports in groups of less than six. What's an adult sport? Don't tell me. Uh, the planned return of spectators to sports venues will now not go ahead. Um, Mr Johnson also said the government would provide police and local authorities in England with extra funding. Uh, OK, there's something. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm working my way to uh, more. You see, OK, here are my thoughts. We know a bit more about COVID. We know how it spreads and we know better how to deal with it. You know, there was all that thing about ventilators to begin with. And then it turned out there's the ventilators who were killing the patients that were killing the patients. So it's not, uh, you know, we, we know a bit more about it. Survival rates are better. And they're, they're chasing this um, R number business. Under new measures for England, office workers are being told to work from home again. Well, you know, actually, that's not a bad idea anyway. Uh, penalties for not wearing a mask or uh, gathering in groups of more than six will increase to 200 for the first offence. Yeah, I'd like to see them enforce that in Tottenham. Uh, from Thursday, 24th of September, all pubs, bars and restaurants will be restricted to table service only. Uh, takeaways can continue. So what do they mean? Oh, it means they can't crush at the bar <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, because it's if you if you're wearing a mask and you're trying to attract the attention of the uh, uh, of the barmaid, uh, you know, <laughs> it's bad enough just waving ten pound notes at them. But uh, you've also got to shout, and if you're covered with a mask, you're very likely to take the mask off because no one's going to take any notice of you. Uh, also, this is this really amused me. From Thursday, hospitality venues must close at 20 to 10 o'clock at night, which means shutting, not saying, all right, drink up and go. It means by 10. And that that really puzzled me. I mean, what do they think? The coronavirus is sort of like a cockroach that comes out only at night, sort of scuttles about looking for people to bite. What do they mean? What's what's this? What's the difference between the coronavirus at 9.59 and 50, 58 seconds and um, 
22, uh, you know, 10 o'clock. I, I don't understand that. Face coverings must be worn by taxi drivers and passengers from Wednesday. Yeah, all right. Oh, dear. I just lost the page. Oh, yeah. Retail staff and customers in indoor hospitality venues will also have to wear masks from Thursday, except when sitting at a table. Actually, you know, that's not uh, that's not too uh, too terrible. Right. Well, now people are complaining about this and they, they're talking about the Swedish model. And that's reasonable enough. Except, you see, I don't think Boris Johnson is doing this out of maliciousness. From the way Johnson speaks and has spoken, it seems to me that he loves Britain and he loves the people of Britain. He loves a lot of the women of Britain, that's for sure. But that's a, um, a mean aside. No, he loves the people of Britain in a sort of abstract way. And in this, you can see the difference between him and many Conservatives and the Labour Party uh, front benchers that I know about who really don't love Britain and they don't love the people of Britain. They've been caught in many cases tweeting or gossiping, caught on hot mics about how much they loathe their constituents or uh, how much contempt they have for them. So we know, and that's why they lost, because the uh, the working class constituents of these, the Labour, who had previously just voted Labour automatically, realised how much the Labour Party hated them. And they got the feeling that the Conservative Party loves the country. And so I can see why... Johnson is being manoeuvred into, into this sort of lockdown. He wants to do his best. And, and then there's the other thing. You know, he got the coronavirus. He knows how awful it is. Speaking as somebody who has had asthma attacks, I can tell you it's terrible uh, to be fighting for every breath. It's 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 animal. You know, you can be in a lot of pain and still be thinking about what you'll do after the pain has stopped. But when you're fighting for your breath, you can't think of anything beyond the next breath. It's just awful. And the last thing that Johnson wants to see is is a load of old ladies and, and children because children do get it, you know. Uh, gasping their final breaths in rows of oversubscribed hospital beds. And, of course, the press will make the most of it, won't they? But, I, you know, my opinion, he should just give up on that because they're going to make the most of anything he does. Most of the press aren't with him. The alternative is the Swedish model. Now, I think the Swedes have probably got it right, but by accident... When we talk about the Swedish model, we talk about how the Swedish government were sensible about this business, how they told older people to stay indoors and younger people to socially distance as much as they could. And they've done this rationally. And so it's had a consequent, uh, relatively gentle effect on the Swedish economy, and the Swedes have achieved herd immunity. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. But I, I want you to just consider the situation from another angle. You see, we're assuming that the Swedish government want what's best for Sweden, aren't we? We're assuming that the people in the Swedish government love Sweden and the Swedish people and want to do the best for them and concerned with keeping them safe. 
But if you look at the recent history of Sweden, well, I can see very little evidence that the Swedish government is remotely interested in the welfare either of Sweden as a country or the people who live in that country. All they really appear to be interested in is taxing them so they can bolster their own egos, uh, their own holier-than-thou egos, uh, about how saintly they are bringing in all these refugees economic migrants, which they call refugees. Uh, uh, this is admittedly 10 years ago, but she was a uh, former leader of the Swedish Social Democratic Party. And uh, this is a few of the, here are a few of the things she said about Sweden and her fellow Swedes. This one is a, just nonsense. If you're social democrat, then you think it's cool to pay taxes. For me, tax is the finest expression for what politics really is. I think many of us could have a few arguments about that. But here, look at this. If two equally qualified persons apply for a job at a workplace with few immigrants, the one called Mohammed should get the job. Uh, that was a uh, Swedish newspaper in 2000. Um, right now, but that has nothing to do with ethnicity. Who, who's, by the way, Swedish and who's an immigrant? So uh, she's sort of subsuming the Swedes at that point into the immigrant population. And then this, which was a speech she made to a Turkish, Turkish youth organization uh, in 2002. And this is the one that really hit me. I cannot figure out what Swedish culture is. I think that's what makes many Swedes jealous of immigrant groups. You have a culture, an identity, a history, something that brings you together. And what do we have? We have Midsummer Eve and such silly things. That's what she thinks of Sweden. And it's that sort of person who is governing Sweden. So you can imagine that when it came to, uh, when they got the figures about what coronavirus would do, you can imagine somebody like her saying, so what, a few Swedish old people die. I don't care because we don't have any identity history or anything that brings us together. And uh, yeah, and, and that's the Swedish model that people keep talking about. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grembo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.